Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your prayer time for August the 22nd. Father, we thank you today for the wonderful opportunity to be able to pray together. And what an absolute privilege it is, Lord, to be able to do that. Now, Lord, we're asking your blessing upon our prayer time today, and we ask it all now in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, today we're going to be praying for a lot of different things, but today I want to pray particularly that you and I would have a can-do attitude. So, Father, today many of us have been struggling, Lord, especially in the last couple of years. Of course, we had to come through the pandemic and all that it brought, and we're grateful that, Lord, we are now seemingly on most of the other side. We do know that there are still people dealing with COVID-19. But Lord, generally, things have returned to normal. But we also recognize today that, Lord, people are suffering in almost every area. For example, Lord, we know that you are Jehovah Jireh, and a lot of people today need to have that type of protection and that type of help today. Lord, they did a survey just recently, and, uh, you know, about eight out of every uh, 10 Canadians where I live have said that they've had to curb their spending. They've had to, some people have actually, one out of every four have had to take a loan out so that they could just barely survive. Father, we're dealing with rising inflation, rising prices, and not enough money for the month. So Lord, first of all, we're going to pray for those today that, Lord, are dealing with this area of they needing you, Lord, to supply their needs. So, Lord, right now, you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That means that, Lord, you're going to supply every need according to your riches and glory. And we thank you for that today. We thank you that, Lord, you will do that today. We don't have to worry. In This is not a, a Bobby McFerrin song where we say, don't worry, be happy. No, Lord, the one thing that we can know is the promise that Jesus gave us on the Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus said, why are you worried about the things of tomorrow? For example, well, he says, why are you worried about transportation, food, clothing, and shelter? He says, let me give you an example. And then Jesus gave a wonderful example. He said, look at the birds of the air and the flowers in the field. He says, they neither sow nor spin, yet God clothes and takes care of them. In fact, Jesus said this, that Solomon in all his glory was not adorned as one of the flowers of the field. Now, Lord, if we've gone out into the field and have looked at the beautiful wildflowers, or even, Lord, gone to, a, for example, a botanical garden and looked at the flowers there, we would fully understand and fully comprehend about the fact that, Lord, there is some beautiful, absolutely uh, spectacular flowers out there that, Lord, you have created so that we can enjoy, we can enjoy the smell of them, we can enjoy the beauty of them, the, the uh, intricacy of them, the delicacy of them, Lord. All of those remind us that there is a God who cares about us. And Jesus basically said, don't worry about these things. Turn them over to the Lord. And so that's what we're doing, Lord, right now. We're turning our needs over to you. And we're asking that, Lord, you will supply every need according to your riches and glory. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider, and we thank you for that today. Also as well, Lord, many people today are, are dealing with mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, intellectual, and financial needs. And Lord, thank you today that as we've already discussed, you can and you will supply every need. But Father, some of us are feeling overwhelmed today. Some of us are feeling like we're almost ready to quit. And that's why we need a can-do attitude. 
Father, in those moments that we feel like giving up, in those moments that we feel like quitting, Lord, I want to give a perfect example of that. When the prophet Elijah found himself out in the desert. He found himself, Lord, in a place where he was discouraged. I mean, he had just been able to defeat the prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth. But then he got a message from the lady whose name was Jezebel. And she just simply said, may it be so that if I don't get you killed and have your life, she says, well, my gods will have to deal with that. Well, Elijah then immediately ran out into the desert. And it was out in the desert that you supplied his need. It was beautiful, Lord, how you supplied his need. And, and maybe, Lord, that's a great lesson for us today, that when we find ourselves in that desert place, when we find ourselves in that place of loneliness and discouragement, that is when you show you are the God who cares. You show that you are the God who can meet every single need. Now, of course, we have the wonderful story of Elijah on Mount Sinai, where he has uh, the Lord showing him in an earthquake, in the wind, and the rocks flying all around. And none, the Lord, the Lord's voice was not in any of those particular uh, situations. The Lord's voice came when everything was still. And it was a still, small, small voice that basically said, you're okay. I've, got a, I've still got some things for you to do. Father, help us to realize. And it was in that moment, though, that Elijah said this, hey, I'm all alone here. There's nobody left. And it was then that the Lord said, listen, you're not alone. There are 7,000 people who have not bowed their knee to Baal. What he was saying is, you are not alone. There are people who can identify with you, people who will stand with you, people who will uh, enable you to do what you're called to do. That was when the Lord gave Elijah a threefold task. The first one, he says, I want you to go and anoint a man named Jehu. When, uh, and anyone that uh, is uh, that tries to escape the wrath of Jehu, they're not going to be able to do it. He says, then I want you to uh, anoint a man named Haziel. He is going to become the leader of Syria. And whoever Jehu is not able to eliminate, then Haziel will then eliminate. And then he says, I got one other individual. His name is Elisha. I want you to anoint Elisha. And if anyone escapes Jehu or Haziel, they will not be able to escape Elijah, Elisha. So even though sometimes we feel that we're done, and we've even said it, Lord, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm finished. That's when the voice of God speaks and says, you're not done. You're just beginning. And I love 1 Corinthians 10, 13 that says, God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we're able to endure, but with the temptation, a means of escape. Thank you today that for that, Lord. I thank you for the fact that, Lord, we are not victims. We are victors. Lord, it's very easy to put on the victim mentality. In fact, Lord, our society is riddled with victim mentality. Lord, in my own country of Canada, there are groups of people that are, you know, walking with a victim mentality. And that victim mentality colors everything that they do. We find, for example, Lord, in the Middle East, the people of the Palestinian persuasion, either in Gaza or in the West Bank. And they have had a victim mentality since 1948. No matter what Israel does, Lord, they are going to continue to hate Israel. Lord, we have prejudices, Lord, in our the North American society where because of ancient wrongs, things that happened three or four hundred years ago, we still have people in our society that are claiming compensation, claiming uh, some sort of reconciliation or restoration. And Lord, we 
the question is, how long are we going to keep paying for the sins of the past? Well, Father, we know that true forgiveness comes when we choose to forgive the wrongs of the past or even of the present. Father, victim mentality says, I have a right to this particular hurt or this particular offense. When the reality of the situation is, as long as we hold on to the offense, as long as we hold on to the, uh, the mentality, Lord, we're never going to be free. We're never going to be able, Lord, to get past or in the place where we can actually do the things that God really wants us to do. So, Lord, we got to break that victim mentality that so many people are under, and that's what we're going to do today. Father, we're coming against the victim mentality. We're coming against the people who feel that they have the right to revenge. And the problem with the right to revenge, it is being exploited by the enemy. He is deceiving. He is testing. He is accusing. He is stirring the pot. He is making sure that people stay in that victim mentality. Because as long as they're in the victim mentality, they can't do the will of God. They can't get free. And so they walk in unforgiveness. It, it colors everything that they do. And Lord, they're never able to truly love or truly do what God intends them to do. That's why we need to walk in, of course, victor's mentality, not victim mentality. Now, Lord, today, what we're going to do is take a moment. Lord, we've all been hurt. We've all been offended. We've all been wronged. Lord, it's part of life. And Father, some of us are still holding on to that. Lord, right now, we make a decision that we're going to forgive. We're going to make a decision right now that we're not going to hold on to this anymore. Lord, right now, we're giving up our right to revenge because we recognize what it's doing to us. We recognize that it's coloring everything that we do, everything that we see, everything that we believe about ourselves and about others. We recognize that. Lord, we give up our right to revenge. I know that our society, especially in the cinema, has exploited the revenge mentality where the bad guy, you know, he gets it and uh, the hero walks away with the girl or with the guy and uh, everything is copacetic. But we know that that's not true. You see, one man said, my revenge dies with you. But the reality of it is it never does until we actually make a decision that we're going to forgive, until we make the decision that we are going to give up our right to revenge, that we're not going to continue to be a victim. When we do that, Lord, that's when true forgiveness and true love begins to flow. That's when real peace begins to happen. When we choose, Lord, to forgive. And we're going to do that right now. Lord, we're going to choose to give up that offense. We're not going to hang on to it any longer. It has become a root of bitterness. And Lord, we know, as Jesus said, the cares and riches of this life will choke the message of God. And we don't want that to happen anymore. Lord, we want today to walk in victory. We want to walk today, Lord, in the power of God. Lord, would you replace that oil or that, that you give us an oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that Lord, today we would recognize that you can give us beauty for ashes. Sometimes, Lord, our lives are feeling like they've been on the ash heap. We feel like Job. Job, of course, had everything, and then it was all taken away. And then the person that he loved the most came to him and said, what you need to do, I mean, look at yourself, man. You need to just curse God and die. And he said to that individual, honey, I can't do that. He said, the reason I can't do that is because of the fact that, uh, you know, um, we need to trust God. I mean, we're all blessed, but there are times where famine come where times things that happen that shouldn't we don't think should happen or we think are as unfair. Has God changed? No. 
God has not changed. He is with us in the good time and in the bad time. And in due season, if we don't grow weary in well-doing, we will receive a harvest. Father, that's what we need to peep in the back of our mind when bad things happen to us. Lord, when things happen to us that we don't think are fair, things that happen to us, Lord, that are wrong, things that happen to us, Lord, that are bad. Father, we know that it happens, but our attitude will, of course, uh, indicate everything. In fact, years ago, I found on a on a wall of a church, it said, everything is, attitude is everything in the things of God. And I, I remember, Lord, putting that on the wall of the church that I pastored in trail, reminding people that with God, all things are possible. And also reminding people that the Lord will give us that can-do attitude. Lord, we absolutely refuse to back down. We absolutely refuse to back out, back down, backslide, or back off. Father, today we are going to make sure that with your strength, we can do everything. I was thinking about the Apostle Paul, Lord, how that the Apostle Paul was called by the Lord. I mean, it was even prophesied that he was going to go into captivity, that he was going to be made a captive. And Paul said, listen, he says, not only am I willing to be captured, but even to die for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul knew that he had to go to Nero and tell him about the gospel. And so he went through years of prison. He went through a, a storm. He went through a shipwreck. He went through being bitten by a snake on the Isle of Malta. For what reason? so that he could stand before Nero, who was at the time probably the most evil ruler of the known ancient world at that time. And there he is standing before Nero. Nero says, why are you here today? And then Paul would explain the situation. Of course, what would happen is that a Roman magistrate would have stood there and said, these are the charges that have been brought against him. Nero would look at the charges. And then he says, okay, man, give me your defense. And that's when the apostle Paul would share his testimony, just like he shared it with Aquila. He would tell how that at one time he was a Pharisee, how that he was a proponent of the law of God, which Nero would you know, listen to. And then he would tell how that he was converted on the road to Damascus and how that then, you know, the persecutor became the promoter, how the person who was trying to destroy the church became a proponent of the church. And then he would share his testimony of how that Jesus Christ changed his life. And then he would share how that Jesus Christ could change Nero's life. Now, this is an interesting situation because Nero at the time was actually, <laughs> and I think the irony of the situation is, he is actually trying to destroy the church, and there he has in front of him one of the greatest proponents and proclamation of the church, Paul telling him his testimony. The, the reality of the situation was Nero did not have any excuse. When he passed away and headed into hell, he had no excuse. And Father, you speak to people, Lord, right across the board. We're so grateful for that. Lord, what I'm trying to say today is simply this. Would you enable us, Lord, to have that warrior mentality? Would you give us that overcoming, overcomer mentality? Would you give us that more than conquer mentality that we need today? to fight the battles that we need to fight today. Lord, every day brings new challenges, new opportunities, and of course, circumstances and situations that can either be good or bad. And in every situation, Lord, we need wisdom. But also as well, Lord, we need your insight. We need to have your understanding. So that's why we're asking you to do that today. Father, we don't know what's going to happen today. Right now, Lord, 
I'm doing this particular um, prayer time just before seven o'clock. And, and Lord, I don't know what today is going to bring. I know that I'm enjoying right now, Lord, the opportunity of being able, Lord, to pray, but also as well, Lord, to be able, Lord, to be on the radio on AM 930 The Light, to encourage people, Lord, to serve you and to love you. Father, there's a lot of apprehension out there. There's a lot of fear. And Lord, we're going to break that fear to fear right now. In fact, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 1.7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Lord, in those moments today, and the triality of the situation, Lord, is we've only got today. We don't even know if we're going to last through the night. We don't even know if we're going to last through the day. Lord, anything can happen. Lord, I remember that when I was living in the community of Salmon Arm, and there was a big, huge dump of snow. And I remember myself going up on the roof of my house and uh, moving the snow off the roof of the house because of the fact that it was too heavy. There was a young man just three or four blocks away from where I lived. He was the same age as I was, and he was doing the same task that I was doing. But the difference was he didn't come off that roof the same way I did. He fell off that roof, Lord. He hit the side of the railing of his particular uh, deck. He broke his neck, and a father of two who had children, eight and four years old, and I at the time had children basically uh, a little bit older and a little bit younger. And that impacted me because that young man was doing the same thing that I was at the same time that I was, and yet he never made it, and I did. Lord, it just reminds us about the fluidity and the fragility of life. Father, today, help us Lord, not to be ruled by fear. Let us not be ruled by worry. Let us not be ruled, Lord, by concerns and the cares and riches of this life. Father, in this moment, we're going to ask for three things to happen. Number one, that Lord, today, we would fully embrace and fully enjoy your love. That love that you gave to us. I, I read today in 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. What a wonderful privilege, Lord, to be able to do that, to actually have you show us how to love. So we're receiving that love. We're being healed by that love. Secondly, Lord, that love gives us power. Lord, we, when we know that God is on the throne, when we know that God is in our corner, when we know that we have resurrection power and divine enablement and strength, Lord, that just gives us power. We are standing in the power of the Lord. And Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, destroyed the works of the devil. And Father, we're so grateful for that fact. And we're so grateful for the fact that, Lord, you are able to do beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. Lord, we're going to walk in that power today. Thirdly, we're going to walk in the confidence and self-control or self-discipline that comes from knowing that God has everything under control, that we have God's power, we have God's love, and that fear can be dispelled. In fact, it was John who said this, perfect love casts out all fear. So right now, Lord, we are casting out of our love, out of our life, I should say, through the perfect love of God fear. You have no right. You have no authority. You have no power over us. We recognize that fear has a spiritual component and a spiritual dimension involved in it. And we are exercising the authority that we have in Jesus Christ because the Bible says, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We're doing that today, Lord. This is the day of our victory. This is the day we are no longer victims. We are no longer being conquered or overcome or being worried. Lord, we are making a declaration of faith that we are warriors, we are overcomers, 
We are more than conquerors, and we are victors in Jesus Christ. We're making a statement of faith. Maybe we don't feel that way. But what we're making all the adversaries, the world, the flesh, and the devil, we're telling you today we're not going to be succumbed by you. We're not going to allow you to destroy us. Instead, we are going to stand up and we are going to take our authority that we have in Jesus Christ. And we today are making a statement. We belong to the Most High God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God is going to use us as a standard. And he is also going to give us spiritual authority. And today, Lord, as well, we ask for divine help. Send those angels today to protect us. Send that angel, Lord, that will be able to slay the Assyrian army that is before us today. And help us to remember, with God for us, who can be against us? No one. Father, that is a wonderful, wonderful privilege today. And I thank you for that. And I thank you, Lord, for this prayer time today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you like what you've been hearing, I would encourage you to press the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you today for spending time with me. And I hope that what I've prayed today has inspired you to go and take your land for Jesus Christ. My name is Robert Dean Steele. You have yourself a great and godly day.